Okay, let's see. <clears throat> okay, let's get get you guys promoted. So hang on just one second. Hey, Gary. Hey, Andre. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. Yourself? I'm doing all right. A little bit better now. I was kind of wiped out earlier. Um, <laughs> this cold's getting the, getting the best of me. So, hey, John. What's up, Gary? How are you, man? Doing pretty good. Appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Hey, everybody. Good evening. Hey, Trevor. How you doing? Pretty good, Gary. Glad you're feeling better. It's it's I, all I did was eat supper and lay down for a half hour. <laughs> so here's a little bit of rest will do for you, you know. Sometimes it's all good, you need. Good news is I got a friend, John Strickland's going to do most of the talking tonight. I can sit back and be the passenger for a change. So, <laughs> um, hey Andre, I'm gonna pro, I'm gonna promote you to uh, make you a co-host if you don't mind. Yeah. And help me with the um, promotions here. A co-host. Okay, there you go. Um, we'll give everybody a minute or two to get on, guys. So, so John, we typically here have uh, most of the folks are from our team from around the country, um, but we also have guests on every week, and uh, also from around the country and um, you know different brokerages. You know, KW, of course, EXP, where where we are, uh, Remax, you name it. Um, so it's a great great audience, and most of them have a good mixed business. You know, they serve owner occupants and investors alike uh, in terms of uh, brokerage. As you might imagine, right about now, knowing how to, to market and promote themselves is is, is uh, front and foremost to most of their minds. I mean, it's a daily topic. We're working, how, how can I get more clients? How can I get more leads? Things like that. And, Absolutely. Um, yep. So let's see here. Let me get myself situated. Seven and three, we still got another minute or two. All right, got some of the new folks and some guests. Luann, it's always good to see you. Hope you're doing well. Hope your family's well and looking forward to a nice, nice Thanksgiving. Thanks, Gary. Yes, all is well. I heard you were sick. I, I'm glad yes. you're feeling better. Thanks. I got a, I had a cold. Um, I guess that was the latter part or first part of last week. I forget, but <clears throat> very mild. Oh, well, good. This one, this one's a little bit, this one's actually worse than the, when I had COVID. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was really, really mild. I didn't even, I didn't realize I had it actually. I mean, I, thankfully I had tests. I took the test and need to stay away from other people. But um, I was one of the, one of the lucky ones, I guess. So, oh, you have uh, a haircut. I did. Yep. You look great. Oh, and thanks. My friend John Saya is here also. Hi, John. Hello. Hey, John. Welcome aboard. So, so guys, what we're going to do tonight is uh, uh, interview John uh, Chuckman on our podcast a few few weeks back. And there's probably a number of things he could talk about, <clears throat> you know, you know, operating like a business, for example. But we got into marketing and I was like, man, this is really good stuff. So John, really, you can you can probably, you know, any number of subjects would be very relevant. Um, um, you know, probably the marketing is always the thing that's just gonna that just all comes back to that. I mean, how you position yourself and you know your your message, the market, the media, all that coming together. Um, when you ha when you have it, it's really good. But when you can't figure it out, it's very frustrating. <laughs> you know, so yeah, no, yeah. totally get it. Yeah. And do you have now? Do you have a, a like a presentation? Like, do you need me to promote you to? I'm good. I'm good. I'm just gonna talk, and you'll shut me up. <laughs> okay. Okay. And we we generally do this um, kind of open mic, a lot of Q and A. Generally, mm -hmm. if it gets once it gets going, you'll get a lot of a lot of questions. But do you prefer people to be more engaged and more active? 
I'm I'm flexible, man. I can talk or I can. I love questions. I think, you know, when it comes to marketing and social media, especially, there's going to be a lot of questions, right? So feel free to, yeah, however you run it, I'm good to roll, man. I can, I can kind of, I think like, hey, I can kind of intro what, what I've done, right? You know, I haven't even been in real estate, probably not that long compared to a lot of people here, right? What am I, uh, three, three and a half years, right? September, 2019. So, um, yeah. It's been really cool how it's been built. And of course, now, like as the market shifts, I have to shift and adjust. Um, but you, I mean, you know, a little bit like um, just how I've built it all through social media. I mean, I'm happy to just kind of share and give some recommendations. Um, I was on an interview earlier today. And like, I think, I mean, there's even like a couple quick things I could show people about social media that I would do like in five seconds that would like completely change everything that you're doing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I agree. And you're you're you've got an amazing, awesome story. You know, I mean, how you got started and how how fast you took off, and you really just applied the some of the key principles and and amazing results. So if you wouldn't mind, maybe go ahead and um yeah uh give everybody a little bit of background, like what you were doing prior to this. Get into it. Um, that'll give us some context and and then take them take them through your your own personal example. Yep. And then maybe we can show them or give them a couple of quick easy things they can do and uh open up i mean I've, sometimes we do these work sessions i'll tell people look mm -hmm. open up a browser session go in there and, and set this up now <laughs> you know yeah so. no absolutely and while people are here like feel free like my facebook's public you don't have to be my friend you're welcome to but you don't have to you can kind of see some of the stuff that i do um john shookman and you can kind of see on the zoom how it's typed and my facebook is public what i will say is so basically um and i shared this on gary's show but just for you guys here who i haven't met um february 26 2019 i lost my last w2 job i've had more w2 jobs than probably anyone in the world um from the time i was 16 to then so 32 33 um, you know, 17 years could never keep a job. Now I wasn't sleeping with the boss. I wasn't robbing the cash register. Um, I just couldn't find my niche. Um, and so basically my journey is just constantly going from one thing to another. Um, if there's something to sell besides cars, I've probably sold it tools, mattresses. Um, oh geez, I can't even think of them all, but spent years in management at Chick-fil-A spent, um, time working in residential homes with people with uh, mental health disorders. Um, I've That was probably the only job I didn't have that wasn't sales. But like, if there's something with sales, I've probably done it. Um, and really, so my last job, um, and I shared this on Gary's show, but I think, um, you know, there's a great Albert Einstein quote that basically says, everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it'll go up its whole life thinking that it's stupid. And that's kind of like, I, did, I wish I would have found that quote years ago. I just found it recently. Um, but that kind of explains my entire W2 journey. I kind of went from one thing to another, to another, to another. Um, and either I would get dissatisfied and like try to get a promotion or move to a new institution or um, this or that. Um, and, you know, if you kind of follow my journey and what I do, like I have the entrepreneurial mind in a lot of W2 jobs that does not work, right? They want you to do the job. So a few examples, I might've shared this on Gary's show, um, a few examples is like I spent years in management at Chick-fil-A, great corporation, great company. Um, the issue is, um, you know, at 1230 or during a lunch rush is not the time they want you to think about improving things. They want you to get the darn food out the window to people and they're doing 120 cars an hour, right? They're, it's like 20 seconds a car and that's not an exaggeration. Um, <laughs> so time to like think about it, improve the business was at 10 a.m. when they weren't busy or 4 p.m., or 9 p.m., right? Um, and so I constantly was fight, fighting this battle, like trying to improve things at the wrong time. I remember in my last W-2 in banking, um, things like the assistant branch manager would send me an email and say, hey, can you email this person? And I'm thinking, did you just email me to have me send an email, right? A lot of us have been there. Um, so when I finally lost that job and got into, basically I had known friends in real estate, had a lot of people um, that, were in real estate. And, and so when I lost my last W2 job, could not find a job. I said to Andy, who now leads our real estate team, I was like, do you think I'd be good at real estate? And he's like, if you could survive like the first year making no money, I think you'd be really good at it. Um, so, I mean, and they kind of say the rest is history. There's the 62nd version of the last four years. Um, when I got into real estate, I made no money for nine months, right? Very typical to make no money at the beginning. Um, 
But what I noticed was, so I have a background, like I've been on social media 2006 when it was just, um, you know, you had to have an EDU address to get on Facebook. I was there. Um, I remember two years later, they opened up Facebook to the rest of the world and uh, people said Facebook will be dead. And now we, of course, see it as like a huge, huge corporation that's bigger than we ever thought it could be. Um, but what I learned is just, you know, a lot of what I've I've done um, has been using social media organically. And um, so I don't pay for ads, right? I've created a six figure real estate business. I don't pay a dime. I don't give Zillow any money. I don't give realtor any money. Um, a lot of it's really just been built on um, organic stuff on social media. So that's kind of like the highlights. Gary, you want me to keep going or you have questions or? Yep. Yeah. Keep going. Keep we'll rolling. Uh, I'm going to check the chat box. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Um, so basically what I learned when I was in banking, I also had a second career um, doing wedding photography. And what I noticed on social media was that as I was put, would put out a gallery or put out something out there or put out a review from a client, um, you'd normally, I'd normally have like one coming out, right? The gallery is delivered. I post it, share, share it on Facebook and I'd have one coming in, like an inquiry coming in for photography services. So when I finally got into real estate, I was like, I wonder if I can kind of apply that same thing to real estate. Um, now, again, I made no money. So I got licensed August 2019. Our son was born five days later, September 2nd. Right. So it was a lot of new all at the, you know, trying to figure out a being a new parent. Um, excuse me. And all these different things. But, um, you know, I, I, I trained with about 20 agents and those first couple months, they were all struggling. Now I was struggling too, but it didn't look like I was struggling on Facebook. So I was hosting open houses. Um, I was uh, going to showings and like putting it on Facebook stories, Instagram stories, my page. I think Gary on your show, I even shared. So my, I kind of had an advantage. It, it sucked, but my first client ever, I showed 63 homes to, which was awful. Yeah. Um, but what happened was I I had the time and the availability. So I just showed the homes and any time I was showing a home, I would put it on my Instagram story, my Facebook story. People would interact with that. Um, and what I learned from that was people started to think I was successful, right? So the I would, and again, I think the greatest thing about social media is like, you don't have to lie or be dishonest. You just decide and choose what to share, Right. So I didn't say like showing this idiot client, like the 50th sh home I've shown them. I was just showing this client, you know, showing clients houses tonight. Um, and so social media I learned during that is all about perception. So I literally was as broke as you can imagine. We ma were making no money. My We're living off my wife's $37,000 income. Um, but people are starting to say like, wow, you're really crushing it in real estate. Now I'm thinking I'm about to lose my house. And I'm like, this is very interesting. So I just continued to post. And so that's where I think whether you're an investor, whether you're an agent, um, there's so much on social media accessible for free, you can find. And I think Gary, on your show, I said, like, if I'm an investor, I'm on there looking for off market deals like, hey, who in I live in Lancaster, PA, I'm like, who in Lancaster, PA has a home that needs a ton of rehab, doesn't want to do the work, doesn't want 30 people in your home for a showing. And those are the people I'd target, but you don't really know until you ask and put stuff out there. So, um, and, and I was doing all the stuff, showings, I would put on social media, open houses. Now, if you're like a realtor, you know, you're making no money doing that stuff. But I learned again, that it's all about perception. People started to perceive that I was successful because of the stuff I was posting. Um, so then um, and again, you share what you want to share. I didn't sit there and say, I'm broke. I'm about to lose my house. That was where we were at, uh, June of 2020. Um, but I've, I've been very open and honest about our journey, right? Like we, um, uh, we paid off, uh, $70,000 in debt and $150,000 on our home. So from June of 2020, when I was like broke to June of 2022, we did a, basically a $220,000 swing where we paid all that off. Um, and so each step of the way, so like as I started to get clients, I would share the reviews and it kind of worked just like in the photography world. I would share a review from Aaron and Shaylin, a client of mine. Someone would message me like, that's an awesome review. Um, oh, I didn't know you were in real estate. 
Um, I, I think the biggest thing I'll say, Gary, is so many people, and I'm sure many of you, you get frustrated about social media. You're posting, nobody's reacting, nobody's commenting, especially from a business page. And I think a business page is very important. Um, but you're you're doing all those things and not getting results. And that's kind of where I go back to like, I basically did social media for nine months, did yeah, in, in my first year, uh, I think my first 11 months, I sold two properties right now. I sold five, then the August coming up on my one year anniversary, but like August to July, two sales, one in April, one in June. Um, but people were seeing, oh my gosh, you're so successful. And so I just think part of it is perception. Part of it is what you choose to share. Um, then I would have clients, um, you know, and I would share the reviews. And I think what's so interesting is like, I post about real estate and my podcast and all the things I'm doing on social media. I still, to this day, will get messages from people that say, oh, I didn't know you were in real estate, right? <laughs> and so you could be posting for three years, no one's, no one's liking, no one's commenting until they have a need, right? So, I mean, I was at one of the Phillies World Series games. I don't want to talk about it. I'm still sad. And, um, a buddy from college messaged me. Now, this was 2006. And he said, hey, I've been watching your stuff, seeing your stuff. Can you help me and my wife find a home? And I'm like, I didn't even know you could have been dead for all I knew. I forgot you existed. But there's I think social media, there's so many lurkers, which is what I call them. Like they're not liking, they're not commenting. It does not matter. You do not care. You just want to be in front of them. Um, yeah, so now I lead our team of, we have eight agents on our team. I lead all the social media stuff. We have the biggest presence in Lancaster, PA on social media, probably about 20,000, 15 to 20,000 um, engagements a month on our page. I don't care about the comments. I don't care about the likes. That's a vanity metric. All I really care about is how many people are seeing it, um, right? Just because it, and again, this is where, not to go way off the rails on a business page, but this is where like a business page is very helpful because on your personal page, you don't know if 50 people are seeing it and 20 people like it or a thousand people see it and 20 people like it. And that's why a business page on Facebook helps so much with the analytics. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I've done, you know, I've had a very successful, right. You know, did okay in 2020, tripled that in 2021, hit that by June of this year. And now, of course, I think we're all adjusting to a shift. Um, but and every single deal, I get a client review because I can sit there and tell you I'm a great realtor. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares what I think about. Of course, I'm going to say I'm a great realtor. Right. But your clients, I have interviews with my clients that I'll you know, pay videographers to do. I'll have um, client testimonials. Every single client I've ever done a deal with has left me a review. Um, now, I. I make it a priority to get them. They know about it, the entire real estate process. Um, and I'll kind of, and so, so you might say, well, how, well, um, like I had a client once and they basically, I, I met them one Sunday afternoon. They wanted to see a house. We went and saw it right away. Um, and I'm, I mean, I'm snarky. I'm sarcastic. I like to have a good time. So that night they, they didn't make an offer, but they're like, Hey, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. Um, thanks for coming out here last minute. And I said, yeah, don't forget that when you leave me a five-star review. Now they laughed. They thought it was hilarious. Um, and then the same client, a couple weeks later, um, we were, I don't think we were under contract yet, but I missed his call. And I said, Hey, so sorry about that. He goes, I said, I said, sorry, I missed your call. Make sure you write that I missed your call in the one-star review. And so I joked about it the whole time. They loved it. So, and so Gary, I think I told you this, but like, then the weekend before settlement, I think we settled on a Monday. They said, I messaged him like, can, can you do me a favor? And he's like, no, John, I'm not giving you your stupid five-star review right now. Like, I don't have time. But I just think I have a template. I make it simple. Um, I've had clients show up to the settlement table that they don't even have a Google account. I don't know how. So we will create a Google account right there and you can copy and paste the review. I try to make it as simple as possible. So yeah, I mean, I'm happy to answer questions. Happy to Gary, you can I'll, you kind of tell me how how to go. I don't just want to talk the whole time. So, we, yeah. we do have a, a question from a, a PF from the team. Uh, he's asking. Uh, yeah. First of all, he's thanking you for sharing. So, um, uh, PF, we call him President Pedro. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, how do you track engagement on your business page, uh, if not by likes or posts, or if 
I guess if you do, if you do track it, how do you track it? You know? Yeah, no, great question. Um, I, there's a, you know, in the, in the meta business suite, there is a way to track analytics and all I'm really looking for is views. Now, why it's because Facebook, the Facebook business post system is, is kind of messed up to be honest, right? Like you're not going to get a lot of likes. You're not going to get a lot of comments. What I will say is so every single thing that goes on our page gets shared to a personal page, right? So for instance, I had this client, they were Aaron and Shaylin. I, so Aaron and Shaylin buy a house. I share that from the Andrew Welk group, our team, to my personal page. Um, Facebook rewards you the quicker that it gets commented and liked, et cetera, on your personal page. Now you want to include text with that. I will say, did anyone ever watch the show Family Matters? I feel like when I um, talk analytics and Facebook, I like put on my Steve Urkel glasses, but it's okay. I will own that I'm like an analytics geek. So one of the things that I think, so here's a few misses, just uh, PF as you're saying that. You don't want to share links to your business page or your personal page. You can say link in the comments, but so many people in real estate are posting stuff with links, a YouTube video, whatever, and nobody sees it because, and again, we're talking Facebook and Instagram who write the, and again, you have to kind of play in their sandbox, sandbox by their rules. They don't want you leaving their platform. So if I post a YouTube link, nobody sees it because Facebook doesn't want you going over to their rival YouTube. They don't. And they, so if you do it, I would like, okay, so let's say I have a property under uh, for sale. I will post for sale to the business page. Maybe I'll share, I'll share it to the personal page. And then if someone asks, I'll say link in the comments, or I'll just post a link in the comments. The algorithm works a lot better in your favor. If you do that, you don't want a link. You know how, you know how for, on a, for a lot of us, it'll say, do you want to go to this external link? Facebook is like trying to tell you, no, you don't do not leave our page ever. So you don't want links in the direct post. You can just put in the comments. Now, some people say the algorithm catches that, but it's, it's harder for the algorithm to catch that. Um, so yeah. Oh, I'm so glad, man. So yeah, I would say what you're looking for. So what we've learned, you know, I, I, on our team, I kind of co-lead it with Andrew. Andrew is a full-time firefighter paramedic, right? He never posted on social media, but was making $300,000 a year in real estate, right? But what he learned was, and this is kind of, I'll use him as an example. Everybody knew him like Andy's a firefighter, okay? And then he started posting. Now he made really good money, you know, 10, 13 million a year in volume, whatever it was, without social media. So he didn't need it. And so he pushed back on it for so long. But here's what he learned. Well, first of all, the people buying houses now, they're all on social media, right? They're all Googling you. They're all looking at your Facebook before they buy. So if you're not there, you, your online presence is dead. Why would they work with you? Um, but what Andy realized when I started doing the social media was, you know, you'd share something. People are like, Andy's a realtor. Andy's a realtor. Andy's a realtor. Andy's a realtor. So much so, and he shares this, it's kind of awkward timing, but at his mom's funeral last May, he had like a dozen people come up to him and say, are you still a firefighter? Because all I see is like real estate on your page. Well, he didn't want to share that he was a firefighter. Like he was using it for business. So, and he's, He's seen results. Now, you're not going to see tangible like, oh, yeah, well, I, I used you because I saw a Facebook post. But what you want to be, you know, in my area, in my county, there's 1,500 realtors, right? So what am I going to do to set myself apart? I know that our Facebook, our business presence on social media is probably like number one. And if it's not, it's at least like top five, top 10 because of all the stuff we're doing. I think when I looked last week, we, we were at like... 300 days in the year and we had done like 250 posts mm. well it's like a post every other day if not more it's like you know every um you know day and a quarter or whatever it is like and so our our presence is hu huge and so for those of you that are realtors think about too the people that then list houses with you are thinking about okay, well, who's going to promote my house? Who's going to get it sold? Especially now, right? The market shifted. We have to tell our clients, your house isn't going to sell in a weekend most of the time, right? Well, then 
Are they going to list with somebody who's got a huge social media presence or somebody that doesn't use social media at all to promote their stuff? Um, so PF, like I, I think my answer to you, I kind of went down the rabbit trail, but you just want people to see you. You don't really care about the likes, the comments, um, but there, when you share a post, you will see people that liked it. And on the business page, you can then, it's very easy, see who liked it and invite those people to like the page is a very quick way to grow it. Does that, that kind of answer your question? Sweet. A couple, a couple of key points, guys. Um, what you're creating, what y'all we call that front of mind presence. So it's like, um, it's yeah. You know, if you ever, if you ever sprain an ankle or you had a, you were on crutches, and you notice how many other people are on crutches. You wouldn't have otherwise noticed that if you weren't on crutches. You know, you're, you're that's not where your mindset is. It's, it's actually uh, something called um, uh, RAS, retic reticular activation system. But similar function occurs in a brain when. When you constantly see something like John Shookman posting images of houses that he just showed, they're not even close properties. He just showed the houses, things like that. That's a regular recurring thing. Mm -hmm. So in their minds, they're associating John with being a realtor. So the next time they decide, they realize they need, they need to buy a house or sell a house or invest in a flip or a rental, mm -hmm. what comes front, what's front of my presence do? John Shookman. He's the guy I got to call. Mm -hmm. He's all over the place. He's he. He buys and sells all kinds of properties with his clients. Whether it does well, Gary, too. Them. Gary, think about like when you buy a new car, you're like, oh, now everybody's driving that BMW or that Volvo. I've never seen that car before. Well, that's because that's what our brain does. Yeah. Yep. So the other thing, too, I think is interesting. And you know, tell me if I'm getting the picture here right. Um, I see a story being developed. So if you're posting, making a Facebook post of a house you just showed <laughs> to a client and you show them multiple houses, it's like you're stringing together the chapters of a book and finally they close. So people have an emotional attachment to the fact that, hey, this guy, a couple, two young kids, they finally got their house. Whenever you teach in stories, the content always is retained more deeply. You know, that's why in the Bible, mm -hmm. whether it's the the Quran, the Gita, um, you know, Torah, it doesn't matter. They all teach in stories because they knew if they did, people would retain the lesson. And John's teaching them. He's teaching them to think of him as a realtor by making all those posts. I never heard of that before. I never thought about that. That's why I thought I'm going to have this guy in the class, man. It's, and it's so easy. It doesn't cost anything. Yeah. You know? and that see gary that's my favorite part free is like my favorite word i'm like the cheapest person in the world right so um I, no it, it's so true and and here's the thing I, so here's the thing i would encourage i i think social media when you hear it some of you are like get like a panic attack right you get overwhelmed and so what i would say what i want to really encourage people is you are a storyteller you're not a realtor you're not an investor you're not a this you're a storyteller um I don't know if people have heard of Jesse Cole, owner of the Savannah Bananas. They've been all over USA Today, ESPN. Check them out and look at what they do. But I had Jesse Cole on my podcast. And basically, they've created, so they're on, they're basically a college baseball team, a post-college baseball team, like not minor leagues, not affiliated with Major League Baseball. And they basically have a bigger TikTok following than the New York Yankees, Philadelphia Phillies, anybody. Well, why? Because they create these amazing experiences with people that come to their games. They dance, they have a good time. But Jesse Cole said to me, he's like, what kind of stories are you telling, right? So in, as you think about social media, what kind of stories are you telling to people? Every single time that I have a deal that closes, um, I um, I say to, you know, I, I, I put a little bit of the story. Hey, this is what happened. We lost multiple offers, above list price, aggressive offers, but they kept, you know, and I highlight the client. I don't highlight, hey, John's amazing. Like nobody wants to see that. I highlight the client. I highlight the lender, highlight everybody who was involved. And then I write, and you can look at my post now, um, you, you like, I basically say it was such a pleasure to be a small part of this transaction. Now, I could say I'm a big part of the transaction. I showed all the freaking houses. I wrote all the freaking contracts. But I think when you also come and make a social post from a humble perspective, highlighting everybody else, 
you win, right? You, it, it's, it's really, you win on social media by promoting everybody else because then the lender is like, wait, I want to promote John. The, the close, the settlement company is like, I want to promote John. And so I've learned a lot um, to kind of do like promotion by promoting other people, like promoting my clients. Um, and here's another thing I'll say to you guys about social media. I have a great friend and mentor, Vincent Puglisi, wrote a great book, The Wealth of Connection. He basically says, when you're not willing to put yourself out there, you are being selfish. And he said that to a buddy of mine in a mastermind group we have every Tuesday morning. And like, we all kind of looked like shocked. Like, did you just say that? But his point is basically like, there's 1,500 realtors in my county, right? I'm not going to beg people for business. I never have. That's just not what I do. But I'm being selfish by not telling them I'm a realtor, by not telling them about my business and how I serve people's needs. I'm not giving them an opportunity to work with me. And then they're going to go work for some other realtor. And I know about you know half of them in my county that will screw them sideways, right? I'm not begging for business, but I'm going to let them make the decision. And it's being selfish to not give them the option to work with someone that's going to have integrity, earn trust be honest, right? You know, think about a mechanic that, think of every mechanic just screwed everybody over, right? And most of them do anyway. If the ones that do a great job and have integrity and honest aren't telling you about their business, we're all just working with crappy mechanics, right? Um, so that's another thing too, I would encourage you, like when you're talking about your business, you're not being selfish. Um, you're actually, you're helping others by telling people what you're doing. Now, don't do it in a sleazy way and beg for business. But if you're just putting your business out there, you're helping people. And, you know, I people often say like, well, are you worried about your friends and family, like seeing your stuff and getting annoyed? And I'm like, well, no, because I've had plenty of friends and family that work with me as a realtor because of what they're seeing. But the other part is like, if they're annoyed by my business and me, you know, feeding my family, like what kind of a friend and family are they anyway? Um, so I would really encourage you guys. You, you're you not being, you're being, you're, you need to promote yourself, right? And by promoting, you know, your business, you're actually giving others an opportunity to work with someone that does great work and is going to take care of them. Awesome. Hey, um, we have another question from Shastine. She's on Vancouver, Washington. Um, is your home tour a live one with the client in it? Does she mean like my interviews? Like, because I don't know. I when you're touring the home, um, oh, I'm you, sorry, are yeah, you yeah, recording yeah, it, or is it uh, you post like a still shot later on, or you know, no, normally, great question. Normally, it's a still shot later on. Now, again, I if you were to say to me, Hey, John, where do we need to be on social media in the next six months? You should be in short form video. That's what TikTok is pushing, that's what Instagram Reels is pushing. If you've been on Instagram recently, it's impossible to even see photos anymore when Instagram was like a photo only platform. Um, so I do think you could even record a 15 second video. I've uh, what I've tried to do recently is record like a 15 second video and cut the audio because I don't want my clients and just add music. Um, but if you see, I put up a post recently, I came back from Florida, a retreat, and I just put um, if I have to come back from Florida, at least it's for like a beautiful view like this. And it was like um, outside Lancaster. Actually, it's called Paradise PA. Mm. All it was was me at a showing. Now, my clients ended up actually getting that home. I'll post it under contract right within the next few days. But it's just putting myself out there and showing them about my business really by sharing a personal, hey, if I have to come back from Florida, at least it's for a nice view like this. Um, your your social media. So I have 3,700 connections on Facebook. That's 3,700 potential people to do business with, right? Will they all do business with me? Probably not. Um, but here's what I would encourage as well. My Anything you see on my Facebook, there is a purpose. Every single freaking thing that we post. Next week, we'll be in Nashville doing our debt-free scream at Dave Ramsey's place Wednesday. I'll post about it just to because people have been interested in our journey. People have seen the struggle we've gone through. Um, in the same way, if I post about my trip to Florida, if I post about you know an adventure with my kids or my podcast, I'm, I'm promoting something. Sometimes it's just the freedom I get to have in real estate to at two o'clock in the afternoon, take my kids somewhere fun, right? Um, and for those of you that get overwhelmed by, I don't know what to post. I don't know when to post. Um, 
I would say I often tell people, think about 10 things that people don't know about you. Okay, that's 10. And 10 things people don't know about your business. And if you just did one, a post every week, um, lit hey guys, I, I just want to share this cool story about, uh, I met, uh, I met, I don't even know, some famous athlete. I, I went to school with Peyton Manning or some like, those are cool stories. People love stories. And so, um, you know, maybe you met El Elton John once or something like people love cool stories. So what are 10 things people don't know about you? What are 10 things people don't know about your business? If you did one of those a week, you literally 20 weeks. I'm not good at math. That's why I'm not a lender. What That's like a third of a year, at least of, uh, of I'm glad PF likes my jokes. Um, but that's, that's a good amount of content. 20 weeks, just post one of those a week. So, yeah. Yeah. But when you're, so when you're posting, is it primarily Facebook or are you using, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, the other, the other platforms too? Yeah. Great question. Um, so I normally post to Instagram and then it shares to Facebook. Um, I also share on LinkedIn. I'm definitely not like a LinkedIn expert at all. Here's what I'm going to encourage. Use the platform you're already on. So many people hear about social media. They're like, okay, I need to do this. I need to be dancing on TikTok. I need to be this. And I'm like, hang on. Like what platform do you already have? Right. Facebook is my primary. Why? Well, because I've had it since 2006 when I was in college, right? I've got, I can't do math, 17 years or whatever, um, for whatever it is, doesn't matter. That many years, again, not a lender. Push it up. You graduated. Yeah, yeah I've, I've got a good amount of years into those connections. Um, so why wouldn't I use that first? I, I still, there's people that will message me and I'm like, I forgot that you existed, <laughs> but sure, I would love to help you find a home. Um, and so that's my primary because that's, um, you know, what I do. If you're into like, I, you know, LinkedIn, I've heard is great for like flips because there's a lot of business people on there who might own homes or want to buy homes, et cetera. I'm, I, I repurpose my content there, but I'm certainly not an expert at LinkedIn. I think first and foremost is like, use what you're already using. Um, I have a great friend who talks about like a content waterfall. So stuff that you send out to your email list. Could be a blog post, could be a podcast episode, could be a Facebook post, because different people consume content a different way. But I would say start with the platform you're already on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we used to, back when I was actively in production, <clears throat> completely accidental. So I had a client who wanted me to, to go to the properties and walk through almost like what Shastin was, was indicating mm -hmm. and record going through the property. And I would go through the property and I'd have this sheet on the property. And these are mostly rental, rental properties. Um, and I would go through the details, the rents, the expenses, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, making sure it's, as I'm going through the, through the rooms, and I get out to my, my truck and load the thing up to, um, to YouTube. And all it was is because one of my friends said, because I'm running out of space. I'm like, how do, how do I, what do I do with all this video? It's like it gobbling up a lot of space. And he said, oh, just load it to YouTube. They'll let you do anything for free. So I, you know, inadvertently had created a, a I don't even think I created a channel, be frank with it, it was had my name on it, you know? Well, lo and behold, I started getting contacted from people. So, hey, is that property still, still available? And if it was, I would, you know, of course, tell them sure it was. I would get business that way, completely accidentally. Mm -hmm. and, it, and guys, these videos were horrible. I mean, I'm holding the camera up here. So the closer you get, the bigger your nose gets. You guys ever notice that? So you can have the perfect nose, but you get in front of a phone camera like that too close, and it's going to look like you got quite a hawker there. And uh, and I forget I'd had the thing up to my ear, like I'm talking to my phone, and the, the video is my ear, you know, or I have the, the thing backwards, you know, just all kinds of. Stuff. So it didn't matter. I mean, the, the content was there; it was easily digestible, and it's what they wanted, you know. So yeah, that was just YouTube. I mean, we're. We're all over YouTube, so and yeah, and and I think you know I had I had a great guy um on my oh my gosh now I'm drawing a blank no uh so I had a great guy on my podcast last year his name is Sean Cochran he's a realtor in the Chicago area um uh, I don't even know how many followers on TikTok now I can only but at the time he had two hundred fifty thousand followers on TikTok and here um is what he told me 
because I basically had him on and I'm like, all right, realtors out there are stressed about video. They don't want their face. They don't like the way they sound. They don't like the way they look like I record a podcast and I release it three times a week. Like once it's gone, I don't even listen to it. My wife is it's literally a rule that like she is not allowed to listen to it while I'm in the house because I don't want to hear my voice. But I release it for thousands of people that listen every month. So no one likes the way they sound. No one likes the way they look. So I asked this guy, Sean Cochran, um, I said, Sean, like, what do you say to people that like, don't like the way they sound, don't like the way they look, et cetera. And he said, John, most serious face. I, he goes, John, I'm a black kid from Chicago with freckles and I wear a cowboy hat. He's like, if I can be on video, you can be on video. And I thought it was a great point because no one likes, I don't like the way I look. I don't like the way I sound. No one does. Right. But everyone else, right. I'm not like looking at Gary for what he looks like. I'm I'm not. I'm like so worried about how do I look? How do I sound? And that is kind of what I would encourage everyone with like on if you're think trying to get on video more cuz that's where social media is going, overcome that fear. No one is like looking at, oh my gosh, my makeup doesn't look right or this for the girls. I mean, I don't know, it's 2022. So whatever, you guys do whatever you want. But like no one is judging you for how you look. They are so worried about how they look. And I'll go back to like, you're putting out free content to help people. So if someone doesn't like their vi your video, okay, well, go away, disappear. I'm putting it out for free. So that's kind of what I would encourage all of you with is whatever you're doing to like, maybe you record videos about market updates or investors or investor alerts in your area. Like it doesn't matter what you look like because everyone else is all, they're so busy looking and thinking about, oh, I don't like the way I look or I sound. They're not even thinking about you. So hopefully that's encouraging for some of you. Yeah. Um, now, would you, would you, I know you're doing still shots when you're posting. So you're posting when you show a property and you post when it goes under contract. And I'm, I'm guessing you do a post also when it closes. But what about other things? Like you do the inspection, things like that. I mean, are you keeping the story going at that level of detail or is it? Um... Man, now I feel like I've missed. I should be. I f you okay. should be anything that you're doing should be out there. Right. Um, you know, I'll show how I <laughs> actually, I had one that w went under contract recently and I made sure to do the post on the day of the inspections. Cause I was pretty sure the inspections was going to blow the deal up, but I'm like, I at least want this on my social media. I'm not going to go back and be like, Hey guys, that post I made last week, the deal blew up. Sorry. Like nobody's paying attention that much. And it's, I, it's, I decide what I put out on social media, right? I get to choose. So, um, I absolutely would, right? And if you work with clients directly, someone's going to see that and be like, oh, geez, my realtor didn't want to come to the inspections. They told me it wasn't their job. Um, Sharon's right in my screen. So I'm going to pick up, like Sharon came to my inspections. No one else came to my inspections. Like, and then they tell their friends, hey, they, so I just think little things like that that can kind of like set you apart um, yeah. are big. Anything, and again, Free advertising. Free is my favorite word. Free advertising. So what's the harm? I guess I would say, Gary, why not? Right? What I'm thinking is um, when you do the initial tour, and this I'm just kind of, you know, speaking as I think here, like video, like record that one, video, video record that one. And mm -hmm. then everything else is an update, you know? So, you know, still shot with the inspections. And then maybe the closing have them do a quick video after the, the everybody shaking hands and patting each other on the back, that kind of thing. Great way to wrap things up because I'm, I'm guessing it's still true today. There We get more juice with video than we do with still shots. I mean, that's it's always something we've heard, but I don't know if it's still true, you know? It is, that is, that is a thousand percent true now. Like if you can overcome the fear of being on video, I had people in the membership that I lead, you know, and I think sometime this summer or whatever, they were like, well, I don't want to really be on video. And I was like, well, Instagram is literally about to be all videos. And they're like, no, I'm just going to post my pictures. Literally two weeks later, what do we all see when we log into Facebook is now Facebook pushing. Even stories are harder to see because if you open the mobile app on Facebook, the first thing they're pushing to you is reels instead of what used to be stories. So you kind of the social media can be frustrating because you kind of have to, again, you're living in their sandbox. You kind of have to play by their sandbox rules, but I just think it's an opportunity to flex and adjust and learn. Um, I would, I'm, I want to like one of my challenges to myself is like get better on video and just like get over it, deal with it and put yourself out on video. Cause you know, even if you had, so those of you that are investors, even if it's like 
a day in the life of a real estate investor. They have, people have no idea what you do. So you can be like, this is what I do. I get my morning coffee at Starbucks. I'm going to check out a property. I have a lunch meeting. People would eat that stuff up and be like, oh, I want to, I want that person to help me find an investment property. Yeah. Um, I you know, just was thinking of something else too. Um, when you're recording, so like right now we're, we're here on Zoom, but we're also broadcasting live on Facebook and it's on my personal page because the person that I rely on, one of my virtual assistants says, if you do Facebook live, you want to do it on your personal page. I have no idea why, but it seems like if you have a business page, you could go to, you could turn on Facebook live while you're out touring the property. Then it's recorded on Facebook. You can, you can delete it off of your phone if you want when you're done, or you can load it up to YouTube later mm -hmm. and delete it off your phone. Um, and when you do that, your videos don't get truncated. You know, if you try to send that video to somebody, it's going to get clipped, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but is there, you know, actually back to the first part of that, that statement, I'm trying to think now, is there a reason why they have me do this on my personal page, the, the Facebook live part of it? I would I love to know. have a conversation with her and debate her and say it should go to your business page so you can see the analytics. But th they yeah. might have just gotten more interactions on a personal page and that will... Um, and I don't think uh, what I would say, Gary, is don't get caught up in it so much <laughs> that you're like, I'm just going to not do it because I'm frustrated. Like, and I would encourage all of you, if you're going to look at properties, don't get caught up so much in the like, well, which one do I pick today? The business page or the personal page? Let's just start posting, right? That would be my biggest thing. Start posting. Um, and don't get stressed out with that. Um but it might be an analytics thing. I still, my personal opinion, not to like say she's wrong, is I love to see the analytics. Um, I want to see how many people are seeing it so that I can kind of track. Okay, um, this video got seen 300 times. This one was 50. Was there something I said or did in that video that people didn't like? Or why didn't I grab their engagement right away? Um, so again, the Steve Urkel glasses guy in me would like be like, oh my gosh, I want to study the analytics. But I think you're putting it out there to your audience. Hello, everyone. Yeah. And so like, I think it's fine, you know, to whatever you're doing and you, you got to decide what works for you. Well, I will tell you guys, um, well, by the way, we have a new social media person as of about two to three years ago and uh, he's doing awesome. Um, and I've had videos, we, we have thousands of videos and the most I ever got was maybe a thousand something views, usually, usually in the dozens or low hundreds. And all of a sudden, we have a couple of them, and I think it has to do with more with TikTok. We put them out there, and one of them went to, within a, less than a week, over 40,000 views. You know, it's just crazy. And that stuff, it's like, it, 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 once it's out there in the airwaves, it spreads so fast, it's viral. It goes viral. Not all of them. But if you do it enough times, because the one that went viral, I'm like, well, whatever. <laughs> I have no idea why that one went viral, but you just somebody saw it. They shared it, that person, who knows? Um, but that's a lot of exposure. And we are getting more calls, by the way. We have more incoming calls, more incoming emails and, and uh, messages on Facebook. It's, it's actually gotten a lot more active, you know, just, just from doing that one thing. That's so, really cool. Hey, um, for, the, for, the, for the folks on the team here, or even if you're not on the team, um, uh, I know some of you have been using uh, Braden Kinder. And uh, John, Braden Kinder, he's, he's in... EXP with us, his dad was, or is Jay Kinder from Kinder Reach Training. And he created a Facebook campaign for, for folks to help uh, get new clients. It basically was new construction and it really works. I haven't seen it myself because I'm, I'm not in production, but I know there's a handful of agents on the team that are using that. I don't know if, uh, if any of you want to unmute yourself, um, I'd be curious to see what, what's that? He's helped me a lot. I've had several closings as a result of the new construction campaign with Braden. Really? Thanks, Sharon. Yeah. They were, Absolutely. The, Probably I've had a half a dozen closings at least as a result of that campaign. It's amazing. They they say it's like their go-to campaign. Whatever they need production from their front line, they just turn on that campaign and go. And it, Sharon, is it are you getting a lot more engagement too, like more views? like shares things like that as a result also like is that also building up you know i haven't really noticed so much on my personal social media but i i get text messages so the thing i love about it is that it's set up where 
it has an auto response. So if I'm not available and somebody, um, you know, ha they're, they're getting text messages from me and then they'll respond and then I'll respond back, but I'm not really responding back. It's all automatic. And then eventually when I can get to it and I have a moment to chime in, then I can take over and then I turn off the campaign and then I start, you know, actually responding to their texts. And of course I always, you know, call them and, um, you know, go from there. And um, so it just goes from the auto to the, the real and um, reality or whatever. And it's working really well. I've had several closings and, um, and it's great because it, it reaches thousands of people but the ones that are actually interested in buying or selling a home, they're the ones that are going to respond to the text. And so I already know who is interested and I'm not making a bunch of phone calls to people who are just, you know, kicking tires or who already have a realtor or whatever. I'm responding to people who are legitimately looking to buy or sell a home. Yeah, that's amazing. Hey guys, and um, Sharon, and Sharon, you've got, you're going to have a ton of those lurkers that I was talking about that will not say a word and then one day there's maybe they had a realtor that they had to fire maybe and and i would add real quick 40 percent of my clients have fired other realtors right so i'm learning that something i'm doing on social media is making sense that like they they're fed up with agent number one and they're they're browsing social media they see me and they're like let's contact him so sharon i to your point like those people that aren't even interested right now, one day they're going to be like, wait, it's time for a new home. Let's do a new construction, blah, blah. Oh, and they see that ad and, and you know, connect with you. And that'll be more, more and more business for you. Yeah. The good thing is they're in my CRM. Like it automatically goes in my CRM. I've captured their email address or phone number. And so I can put them on my newsletter and they're going to start hearing from me every two weeks from my newsletter. And they can okay. engage there as well, you know, not only respond to the Facebook text, but they can respond to me via the newsletter. And That's email. amazing. Hey, hey guys, I want to tell you too. Um, so I met I met Braden and several people on the team have, have used them. So I just put a post out there um to his, his personal link, Braden's link, and then below it is the, the link for replays. He does a session every Friday called Funnel Fridays. And I think you should participate in that. Because whatever he's doing, it's working. Okay, um, so John, he's a uh, he's. Um, I think yeah, I mentioned his dad's his dad's a uh, lots of history in the industry industry for training. Um, guys, if you're not on the team, I think he'll still work with you, but he he may charge you. If you're on the team, he literally does it for free. You don't pay a dime. I mean, other than the Facebook, you know, five bucks a day or something. I know that's a departure from what we're talking about. I've I have, I've never had luck spending money on Facebook, quite frankly. You know, so we just do the free stuff too. Um, and we're starting to get traction there. But for direct direct contact with uh, with actual clients um, or prospects, you convert to clients. I mean, Sharon's right here. She's in the same group we are. And you heard it. I mean, I, I don't know how else to put it any more plainly than that. Um, I absolutely would jump on board with that. And uh, he'll set up. It's quick. It's easy. I know Lisa's done it. Um, Tony's done it. I'm trying to think of who else is who's here who's done it before. I I, I just started doing it. Did you? And uh, okay. I, I I attended last Friday, and I'm really impressed with his commitment to our success, because yeah. he said uh, that his parting words on Friday were, uh, "When you're ready to launch the campaign, schedule a call with me so we can review it together. Because I would hate to see you pay money and not get results." Call me first. And yeah. I was like, wow, this guy is just like Gary. Sorry, Gary. I'm oh, thanks. That's right. I appreciate the comments. It's, just, it's but, funny. The last but, name Kinder, but they should be kinder because you can't come across any kinder people than that. You know? so, By the way, okay. Lisa Sears has a hand raise. Oh, hey, Lisa. <clears throat> oh, Lisa, you're muted now. You're running to second. I don't know ago. if Lisa meant to have her hand raised. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I have a new headset on. Um, yeah, I'm having an issue with the Monday Night Lives because Gary, when you make them live, I grab them and I try to share them to my Facebook page, business page, and when I click to share, I get a message that your your post is unable to be shared. <laughs> 
So after the third time that happened, I thought, well, I'm going to try my personal page. It goes right on my personal page. No problem at all. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the live, you know, uh, it's anything that I try to share to that page from some other page is not going on. So it's not just the live, but it's frustrating because I would really like to have that live on my page, my business page on Monday okay. nights. All right. I'm going to, we're going <clears> to, <throat> We don't meet with the operations people tomorrow. We meet on Thursday, so we're, we're not actually meeting with them this week, but tomorrow's the executive team. So I'm gonna take it up to uh, Beverly, have her go back to the um, uh, Aldrin and those guys and see if they can give us some direction on that. Because definitely the whole thing about that is, you know, spreading the, the word and getting the word out and getting more exposure, you know? Well, I've uh, been putting it on my personal page because I haven't been able to figure it out. I don't know if it's a, something that's on my page that I, has been clicked that shouldn't be, or or I don't know. So any, any help would be appreciated. Well, I wonder if it's on your personal page, Lisa. Can you then share it with your business page? No, nope, it won't let it me. It page. just won't go to the page. And, and it doesn't make sense, especially with what I'm trying to do with the eight sites that I want to go in that are all being done. Um, I, I can't, I can barely use that business page. I, it's like, I might, I would much rather just use my personal page, but then I don't have the analytics. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll look into that tomorrow. I appreciate that. And then, hey, hey, Sharon, ISIS is asking if you don't mind sharing, I know, I know Braden builds the campaign for free, but we do have to pay for our own Facebook ad costs. So do you, do you mind sharing how much you spent on that? Or on average, how much you spend? Not at all. I spend ten dollars a day. Okay. And I forgot to tell you, um, John. Actually, one of the one of the closings that I did get, one of the clients I did get, um, he did fire his agent, <laughs> and uh, he was actually working with somebody when he met me, and he just, you know, he just thought I did a good job or whatever, and he, um, so he used me, and now he has a a hat. Uh, six hundred thousand dollar farm that he wants to sell, so he's going to let me list it um, right. here in the next week. So um, that was worth ten bucks another... a day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> wow, cool, Catherine. Can I ask you a question? Because you put something in the chat. Will you? So you were saying it depends on the area. You haven't gotten any business yet. Um, I'd right. kind of love to know in terms of timeline, like what you're kind of like what you're posting and how long you've kind of put effort into trying to post stuff. Um. Well, it's been several months now, and I don't have it handy as far as when I started, but I started out with new construction, and it didn't happen here, so switched over to uh, reduced pricing, get a lot more traction that way, but you also get a lot more people that are just looking, um, and it's funny, as I mentioned in the post, I, I even had different, I've had different realtors get on the site and, you know, they've got to sign in, but then they turn around and go, I was just checking out this property and they, you know, it comes from the same MLS. <laughs> so it's, it's very funny to me that they've done that, but that's all right. You know, I do think I would just encourage you. It is a long game. Social media and growing your business with it is like a marathon and you're trying to get to the point too. Right. So I was in, so I did it a year, right. On Facebook and still basically multiple times a week since then. Um, so what we're November, right. I, I got, got licensed August. So we're three, almost, you know, three and a half, three and a quarter years. Now I continue to post about real estate and it might not be every day. It might not be every week, sometimes not even every month, but I do get messages still like when I'm at the world series, Hey, can you help us find a home? Um, and so what I, what I'm realizing is like, it, it's, and that's why I kind of said, like, you might not see, um, it in the numbers. It's not like you're going to, I mean, unless you're paying for ads, like Sharon's going to see that, Hey, I clicked the ad. I texted you or this, um, you might not see immediate results, but what I can promise you is you are building a brand where like you are the real estate guru in your area. If you're posting helpful information and things like that. So that really isn't something you can quantify with dollars. It is definitely, it's kind of like a podcast. Gary knows this. It's kind of like a labor of love, right? Where you're posting because you like want to help people, want to put stuff out there like social media, like me and you're weird um, or something like that. So, and I would just, 
Uh, does that help? I mean, I know it's not really an answer, but. Um, I, I wasn't seeking an answer actually, but it's okay. Yeah. I, I know that it takes time and, yeah. you know, it's my choice to put money into these Facebook ads, you know, with Brent, you know, even though Brendan, like they, you guys have said, help set it up. You know, I end up paying for the, the promotional sense. information, you know, yeah. the clicks. So it'll take some time, but I, you know, I've got a lot more people looking a lot more traffic, things like that than I did before. So and I some, think, I think that's a happen. win. I think that's yeah. a win, even if you don't see it in a tangible like way, unfortunately. Sure. Also, Gary, I have to ask, like, I need, I don't think it's fair that I'm in 30 degrees and this guy, Tom needs, gets to show me his pool in his backyard. That's not fair. I'm, I'm kind of upset. <laughs> yeah. Tom, Tom's in South Florida. He's another, another good guy. <laughs> hey, uh, I, w I wanted to comment. Uh, I think it was Lisa um, who said something about him. No, not being able to share um, not being able to share Gary's business page to your business page yes Is that you Lisa? yes um, do you share that that's a Facebook business page uh, I assume that's what we were talking about do you yes. share admin uh, rights to that page with someone else or are you the only admin on the page do you have a team or do you have access to I'm the else only one way? are you certain of that yeah okay what I was going to say is if you run into not being able to share a post from, and you said it's from any anything you try to share to, to, to that page, it, it doesn't work. The reason would be is because the, the page that you're logged into Facebook from, um, like if you have multiple personal pages or multiple other pages and you're logged in from a different page other than the page that has admin rights to your real estate business page, if you follow me, if you're logged into Facebook from a page who does not have admin rights, and you try to share something to a page that you don't have admin rights to, it won't allow the, the post because you're not an admin on the page and it won't allow, it, allow you to post to it. I'll have to go so, in and look at all the settings. I can't imagine who else would be on there unless I've been hacked because it's only been me forever. Sure, yeah, and it probably yeah. is probably is only you. I don't know what another, what another issue would be. Do you yeah. have multiple personal pages? No, I only have one. Hmm. Yeah, because you can't have a business page, to my knowledge, you can't have a business page without an admin. And if by default you only have one page role, it has to be an admin. And if that person is you, then you, if being logged in on your personal page, you would be the admin with that page. You should be able to post anything you want on that page. Well, that's what I thought. And I really wanted to be able to uh, put it on my business page each Monday night, but I haven't been able to do it. I'll play with it and take a look at what's going on in the back end. And, and then Gary, if you come up with any ideas, maybe yeah. there's got to be a setting off or something. So yeah. something. Yeah. And it's, it's not Gary's page. Cause I've shared from Gary's page before to, to your major. business page. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, maybe he's changed something since then, but I, I don't know. Hey Lisa, we'll definitely check with Aldrin. I mean, he's the guy's, He's pretty sharp, you know. Okay. All so right. Thanks. Let me put a look at the page quickly. And real quick, I want to, we have some questions from Shashi, but um, as I want to tell you, to the, the, the links I put out there for Braden's, the Braden Kinder links, apparently they're not working. So I'm going to have to figure that out. Uh, uh, it'll have to be tomorrow. So hold your, hold on your seats for that. And we'll have Beverly put it in the after class email. So look at the after class email tomorrow. And you'll see those links in there. So, um, so Shashi, go, go ahead and uh, you're still on, on. Yep. I, yes, yeah, yeah. I am. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, good. Yes. Um, so I have a couple questions, of course. So um, in Facebook, um, when your leads come in, how are you, how are you funneling your leads? Are they contacting you directly? Do you have them going into a funnel? Um, you know, and do you have somebody that monitors that for you? Um, and then second question would be uh, how, you know, like usually in certain platforms, certain trainers will say you need to post at least once a day or twice a day, three times a week or whatnot. So have you actually narrowed down a formula that you can attribute to how your page has grown as well as your business because of it? Um, all right. So I just should warn you guys, I'm really good at social media, very crappy at a CRM. So I do not have a system that people go in necessarily. I need one. Um, I just, I, I've, 
all of it for me is organic conversation, right? So I have this hot mess of a board back here. Some of it is like clients I need to touch in with. Um, I do not have like, they go into a funnel. Um, and, and I don't have, I, I don't even on Facebook have like a lead magnet, which is a miss for me, right? We're all working on stuff. So like, um, my thing is just like organic conversations and kind of checking in. So that client, Aaron, that I mentioned, like, oh, they bought a house. Um, they originally messaged me during COVID and were like, oh, we didn't know you were a realtor. I went to church with them for years growing up. They're like, we didn't know you were a realtor. We were looking into buying a house, but Aaron just lost his job. This is during COVID. So I already know, I knew Aaron had to wait six months to buy a house. So I didn't like message them a month later. Hey, are you ready to buy a house? I just checked in. Hey, how's the job going? She was pregnant at the time. How are you feeling? Blah, blah, blah. And then I checked in like, sorry, guys. I checked in like, you know, once a, I checked in like once a month, you know, once, um, you know, once every other month. Um, and then they kind of were watching my stuff. And I remember probably about nine, 10 months after this, I just said, Hey, how are you guys doing? Hope you're well. How's Aaron's job? And they said, Hey, we were just about to message you. Hey, we're, we we're ready to get pre-approved and buy a house. So I don't have a system. I try to keep it as organic as possible. I think if you have a system where it's like, all right, I check in with Aaron on the first, the first Tuesday of every month, he's going to start to see, wait a second. You're just checking in with me on the first Tuesday. You're I'm just in your system. Um, so I tried, I don't know if that answered the first part. Was there a second part? I, I try to keep it as organic as possible. Um, and oh, so how much to post? Here, here's the biggest thing. I don't want people leaving this and being like, well, John says I have to post this, this many times and do this because you're not going to do it. You're not. What I want you guys to really think about is like, how much are you using social media now? For some of you, it's none. So can we even get to once a month? For some of you, you're already posting once or twice a week, right? For someone like me, who's three or four times a week, it's probably just how can I do videos? Maybe how can I get people in a, in a CRM, Shastine? Um, but, it, you know, I want my when I teach this, so many people leave and they're like, I'm going to post every day for the next three weeks. And three days into that, they're going to get so frustrated and overwhelmed that they don't do it at all. Um, and so my encouragement is um, that there's so many studies about like when you should post on Instagram and Facebook and what's the perfect time. I would say the perfect time is like, like start now, start posting once a week, once a month, you know, whatever it is even sharing your story, right? 10 things people don't know about you, 10 things people don't know about your business. Um, and I would start with that. Don't overwhelm yourself with, oh, I have to post three times a week. Because if you're not doing it at all, you're barely going to post one time a week. So I would think about what's natural for you. Use the platform that you're already using. Um, does that help? Yeah, it does. But uh, a lead in question for that would be then, you know, obviously going back to the personal page, business page, there's always been so much. She's in the car. So she went into a tunnel, maybe. you know, opinions on her involved with that as well. But um, I think the issue sometimes for us agents is we started off on personal. I'm sorry. Yes, I am in the car. Um, so how do you get your, your, your friends that are on personal to go to your business to then grow your business organically that way. Yeah. Another great question. I would say, Did you hear that? Okay. Sorry. An another great question. I would say, you know, as you, every single thing that I post to our business page gets shared to my personal page, when those people like it, uh, you, like the comment, I can then, or like the post, I can then invite them from there to like the business page. I don't stress about it as much because I'm not, I mean, 3,700 friends and 500 people like our business page. I will go in there and like maybe once a week, invite 20 people, right? But so many of us ignore those notifications. I just want more views on that. Um, so, and one thing I do want to add for you guys, here is a small miss did i did i say about the phone number at the beginning gary anything about the phone number in your bio i don't think so i don't recall okay. that yeah i i did it early on in an interview so here is a miss that if like the only thing you take away from this call is you do this is um do i have the ability to share yeah hey let me uh promote you real quick uh, sorry that's okay uh panelists uh, truckman 
And you are now co-host. Sweet. So I'm going to share this and I'm sorry, I was kind of stalking a few of you. Um, but I want you to see, um, I want you to see something here. This is my, here, here is a miss and I'll just, I, I got a lot that I could say, but here is a miss that you can fix right now while you're still on the call. So many of you that are in real estate, I, I, so many people miss this. My phone number is right there. Right. So when I, so when someone sees leaving Florida a little bit, you know, all these different things that I post, whatever, um, I want my phone number in there. I think we make it, we overcomplicated sometimes. You want your clients to be able to call you almost immediately. Now, maybe some of you don't anymore, but you want your clients to be able to get to you. And so, so many realtors, I'm scrolling, they're posting things about real estate, blah, blah, blah. And it's impossible to get them on the phone. And so that's why my phone number is right here. And the so your bio is like one of the things you can start with. Put, go here. You have, I think, however many it is. All right, you have 101 characters. Um, and, and that's what you post the stuff there. And here's the other. So that's one. Your phone number should be right there so that they can call you immediately. Here's the other thing. You can get to all my stuff within five seconds. So if you come to my page, you know basically everything. I, I have a tab problem in case you guys can't tell. You, you can click and know everything about me. Well, that's dead. I need to fix that. You can see my personal Instagram, business, LinkedIn, all of the things. You can basically click in the bio. So any of you that went to my page, you can call me and you can click all my stuff within 30 seconds. And so that would be a piece of advice that like, you don't want to make it hard for people to communicate with you. You want to make it easy for them. So I hope that helps. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I used to be hesitant to put my phone number out there. <clears throat> and what's interesting is I've had the same phone number for 31, almost 32 years now. I put it out there everywhere and I never, I don't have problems. You know, I mean, I'm obviously very busy. Um, I use my phone a lot, but you know, I, I block, if there's something, if somebody's trying to spam me or they show me an unwanted, you know, business proposal, which I get a lot. Um, if I don't know them, I just block them right away. So it, it helps me to have that discipline to keep things controlled. But the thing is, is same thing. I, I don't want to hide. I don't want people to know how to get a hold of me. If they have to think, how do I get a hold of Gary or who do I have to call to get his number? Or can I, you know, can I call the office? And they were, no, I, I want them to call me, text me directly. And I'm, I'm talking thousands and thousands of people. And they're not all going to call you and text you every day. So it's not like you get overwhelmed. So I would, I would absolutely, you know, put your number out there, you know? Yeah. Well, and, and here's the thing. If you Google John Shookman Realtor, you can get my phone number. So anyone trying to spam me is going to get my number. Anyone Googling Gary, you, I'm going to get your phone number. So really by not having it on my Facebook, um, it's not, they can find me if they really want, but I want potential clients to reach me much easier. Uh, PF, no, I do not. Um, it hasn't been terrible. Like nobody's bothered me. So it's been okay so far. Um, I mean, but again, as someone working in residential real estate, and I know that's not, that's some of you not but like as someone doing that, I want the calls, right? Some of them are annoying and, you know, like when I was at the World Series game, it was kind of annoying, but I, I want those people to get in touch with me, right? That's that's how I make money and that's how my business grows. Everyone has access to our phone numbers. If I mean, we're on MLS. Everybody has access to our phone numbers. And yeah, it's aggravating, but I always answer my phone. <laughs> yeah. And I think you'll know, right? Okay, someone's going to use it and spam you and it takes one time for them to do that for you to block it. That that number at least won't call you again. So, yeah. Hey, hey, Sharon, by the way, where where's that farm? It's in Oglethorpe County. It's 31 acres. There's a, a stocked pond. That's a is home that, at the basement. Is that, what state is that? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Um, in Georgia, it's it's in Culbert, okay. Georgia. Okay, cool. I'm sure it's nice. Gary wants a farm. <laughs> Come to Georgia. Where are you? Um, it's either it's either going to be Beaver County, Pennsylvania, Virginia, which is where I am now, or uh, the Gulf Coast of Florida. So just between those three, you can almost always find me either one of those three places or commuting between the three. So. 
So I go through Georgia. I got family out there, you know, and uh, love love it. One of my favorite restaurants is called Mary Max in downtown Atlanta. Absolute so best. I have I have one last question, Gary. Yep. Sorry, because I know you guys are going to wrap it up. Um, and that is, John, give us a day in the life of you when you're social media lead generating. Yeah, I think to be honest, um, a lot of it is uh, just Facebook Messenger. People, I mean, I and maybe it's just my people, but so many people uh, Facebook message more than they even text. Now, I don't, I, I will say, you know, I am the social media guy that comes on and tells you to use social media. I would also say I had a friend who's in my membership re that this week lost his Facebook of 4,000 people. He Ooh. gone. Right. And so I want you to be on social media. I absolutely do. What I would say is I don't want it to be your only mode of communication with your potential clients. Right. If I lost my Facebook today, um, I'd probably lose a good bit of people. And so let's get a phone number for them. Let's get an email for them. Even if you don't have an email list yet. And I don't guys see, I suck at a lot. I'm just good at social media. But um, so I think a lot of it is um, just checking in like a lot of Facebook messengers. I really like the way Facebook messenger is set up on the iPhone, on my desktop that I can just, you know, go from one conversation to another, just like a text message. Um, so that's a lot of it. I don't, and again, I don't really have a CRM. I, you know, a lot of it is like this board and a board over here, like that I track clients and potential clients. Um, but I would actually say, I mean, you didn't ask this part specifically, probably 70%, 80% of my clients come through Facebook initially, which is very interesting. So, Okay, so more specifically then, let me ask a more specific question. Sure. So like, for instance, when you don't have maybe anybody conversing with you that's already raised their hand, um, do you actively look for conversations within certain streams of individuals to then engage, to build, because Facebook is kind of like your database, basically. Mm -hmm. And so to build your database and to gain mark, you know, mind share with them. You know, I, I know some agents talk about with their personal page, they'll make to look birthdays or yeah we did lose you but i but i love what you it's all about about you know uh building that talk about facebook lead generating that's kind of what I was thinking of. We... So I lost you there. I see you muted now. Um, I did hear birthdays uh, yeah, in there. I'm driving. No, you're good. I yeah. did hear birthdays <laughs> in there. And thank Yeah, no, you asked a more specific question. So I, I think about, you know, social media, your social media is a living and breathing portfolio, right? That's the biggest thing I think about. So I don't just post when it's coming soon for sale, under contract, sold, the client review, and all my clients have given a review, I do that. But in between, I kind of think about what's going on with my clients, what are the stories going on? So I had an agent that texted me and was like, hey, thank you so much. This has been, um, you know, my clients have wanted to live in this uh, neighborhood for years. We're so glad to be under contract at a place. I save that. I'm not going to necessarily use that. Like for instance, this summer, May and uh, April and May, I closed 10 deals in two months. Well, so if I closed 10 deals, uh, let's even say, I think one of those weeks I closed four deals. Well, I'm not going to post four times that week sold. I want people seeing me busy throughout the year. So I think I did one in May, one a couple weeks later, one a few days later. And I actually think there was one I forgot to do that I need to that I'm going to post. Now, again, no one's looking back and like, wait a second, John, I checked the MLS. You actually sold that house in June. Like nobody's checking. Um, but I'm always thinking about conversations with clients that could be potential content, right? Um, a, a picture of a house, you know, the ones Aaron and Aaron that I mentioned, him and his wife were under contract. And the inspector basically said, hey, uh, you should 
you know, you should ask the uh, homeowner to um, go to their uh, homeowner's insurance to get you a new roof because this has hail damage. And I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. They're moving. I asked. They were willing to do it. It was a thousand dollar deductible that my client paid. That's something to just a picture of the house and the story is something to later share. Um, and I know you mentioned birthdays a thousand percent. I message people every day when it's their birthday or comment that helps the algorithm when you're interacting with someone. Um, Facebook is hearing like, oh, they're hearing that John is messaging them. Let's try showing them some of John's post. If any of you like become my Facebook friend or whatever, and you just like a few of my posts, when you get on Facebook, I'm go, you're going to see my post. That's how the algorithm works. And then Facebook's going to show you the reverse. So you, some, so I'll see some of yours, Facebook, even if I haven't liked your stuff, Facebook saying, oh, uh, Shastine wants to see more of John. And in return, we're going to test to see if John wants to see more of her. Um, and so the algorithm is wild, but that's how it works. Now, if you don't like those posts, right, then they're like, okay, they don't want to see John or they don't want to see her. But that's a way when you do the birthday post, it kind of helps those people to see you. Right. And then lastly, do you do you post both? You said you post on your business first and then you share it to your personal to get both sides. Do you do that? Do you recommend doing that right at the same time? Because some people say you're not supposed to splat it everywhere. Um, and so what is your thoughts on that? Yeah, great question. So I have I have so many different pages, right? For just my podcast and membership, I have a page. I have um Andrew Welk Group, where I, I co-lead the team and run all our social media. But then I have a page for John Shookman Realtor. But when I post something under contract, my where I want people to go, the main place is the Andrew Welk Group, our team page. That's where we get the thousands of engagements. So I share that one to my personal page. But I'm also still posting to John Shookman Realtor. And someone might be like, oh, well, I saw that on the Andrew Welk Group, and now I see it on John Shookman Realtor. You're reaching different people with different posts. Um, I do post them at the same time because just with how busy I am, if I don't post the sold on Andrew Wellcoop and John Shookman Realtor at the same time, I know I'm just going to forget. So, um, you know, and, and even the stories, different people see the stories, different people see the audience, um, you know, and, and you were asking like what kind of stuff to post. I just want to go back there because if you just share some of this stuff to stories, a picture of a house, picture of your Starbucks on the way to the showing <clears throat> stories, Instagram and Facebook have made it so easy to respond to a story. They don't have to go to anything. They just, they just start typing. It's right there. So it's a great way to interact with your clients. Like, Oh, what are you drinking today? What are you? Um, I know a wedding photographer um, in Savannah, Georgia, and she posts on her business page about like the, her favorite coffee shop, her pug, et cetera. Um, and so people will book her for a wedding and know her so much and be like, oh, is Winston coming to the wedding? Uh, like her puppy. So I think, and that's why I kind of say like your social media is a living and breathing portfolio. You don't know what's going to click with people, but I have people that will meet me that are like, oh, we really love like you guys doing, you know, following Dave Ramsey's plan to get out of debt. Like, and some people hate it and that's fine too. I love Chick-fil-A. I love Starbucks. I love, I did Dave Ramsey's plan. And so like, all that stuff that I'm already posting, some of that's not even business, but like if a client sits down with me, they feel like I've actually had clients that are like, well, I already know everything about you from Facebook. So um, I'm going to tell you about myself. And I laugh because it's true. I've kind of given them um, a, a portfolio of my life on social media. So do you do the 20, 80 rule where you're doing 80% business, 20% personal? on both platforms or just personal platform? Oh, I don't, I don't worry about all that. I mean, I have other ways I follow 80, 20 in my business, but I haven't, I haven't even, uh, I, I kind of share what feels organic, right? Um, did you said 80% personal, 20% business or reverse? No. Yeah. Well, it depends on what platform. So people are saying, if you're posting on your platform, people are going to begin to gravitate off your personal, excuse me, your personal, if all you're doing is posting everything, real estate, everything's talk real estate, you know, so they're saying you should do at least if you're going to do, you know, for every three posts personal, you put a real estate in there. 
and then vice versa. If you're in business, you're going to do the opposite. You're, you're going to put a sprinkle, mm-hmm. a little bit of personal in there. So then that way it keeps their interest. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's just been some of the things that I've heard. I actually love that. I haven't heard that. I do think 80, 20 makes sense. I'm probably, um, business is just all business on mine. Um, and my personal is probably 60% personal, 40% business. Um, so, or it might be 50, 50, but it's kind of worked. I haven't had anybody block me yet that I know of. <laughs> um, so, or anyone that matters. So, I mean, I, I think 80, 20 makes sense. And if that's what makes sense for you, roll with it. I this like is it. My last question. This, yeah. this is the last question. I promise. I like lots of questions. Um, so your pages in Facebook, do you even look at all of your messages into one? Because you can find personal things about them in. Hey, I'm sorry. The first part of your part of your question cut out. Do you use the metaverse? Uh, well, I think there's a Facebook has the metaverse or something like that, where you can see all of your comments, both <clears throat> from Instagram and both of the Facebook in one platform without having to go and navigate between three different platforms to see who commented just in case there was a good conversation regarding real estate. Yeah, meta business is is great. It's I, I, to be honest to me, it's actually kind of clunky and annoying. Um, but I there, you know, I think they're trying to improve it. I used to be able to see the analytics right on the page, and now I have to go to the business suite for Meta. Um, but I definitely I use that. Um, but I just kind of a couple times a day will check the business pages on Instagram, personal page, different stuff, and just comment. I think that's that's another thing too. Like a huge win is just like. When people comment on your stuff, just respond. The Facebook analytics will help more people see it and it'll help that person see more of you. So I do use the meta business suite, um, but I would say I try to just scroll organically um, throughout the day as well and just kind of thank people when they comment on something, stuff like that. And it, it seems to work. So yeah, I hope that helps. John, <clears throat> I find this, to, if you don't mind, um, I find this to be real, rather timely because this is something that I've been thinking about incorporating into my real estate business. I um, I pretty much built my my stores on social media and was able to grow, you know, a, a very non-productive store initially that um, I had taken over um, into a very productive store um, through um you know, social media. And I'm um, thinking about that uh, and then using that to kind of catapult, you know, other ones. I I thought, you know, that that would be a really good avenue for, you know, realtor. I mean, you know, for my business in, in real estate. So, um, you know, I I just thought that that would be a really good opportunity to to use that as well i'm just um you know i'm i'm a lot more familiar of course with facebook because i've used it only for business i really don't use it personally at all except for business but um instagram what do you, uh, do you use instagram a lot um you know what kind of results do you get with that kind of thing do you do you kind of pepper that in with the facebook as well Yeah. And I I think I briefly mentioned, I use Instagram and it goes right to Facebook. um, And then, right. So I don't, in terms of like a personal post to my personal page, I will share. So I'll share a post to my personal Instagram, but I don't have it go right to Facebook because I'll share from the team page or the real estate page to my personal Facebook. Um, I use Instagram and Facebook. I do think I would encourage you. I'll just push a little bit because I love doing this. involve your personal life. Now it doesn't have to be like, Hey, I had a fight with my spouse. Like I don't, but I think it's like people want to know you personally. They want to, they want to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. Right. Right. And so, I mean, me and my wife, even, you know, first few years of marriage were kind of like, she wasn't sure she wanted the kids faces on Facebook. So that's kind of something we had to work through. Well, I'm a realtor and everything I do is kind of like to promote my business. You know, it really leads back to that. Um, But I would say, you know, again, in 
Instagram is is kind of an I'm not getting a ton of results from it to answer the question no but I think it's I do get some results and some people find me um I do yeah. think Instagram is going to be a younger demographic right? right so for me right a 34 year old realtor helping you know first time home buyers Instagram probably makes a lot of sense I think it depends on your business who you're trying to reach um okay. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't want to tell you do or don't do this. I would, what I guess I would say to you is it's free regardless. Right. So right. why not at least post it to Instagram? And if it gets you nothing, well, it took you 10 seconds to copy and paste the post. Right. If it gets you something. And that's, I mean, I'm terrible at LinkedIn. Right. But I share all my stuff there. Cause I know I have an audience there. That's not huge, but some of those people don't see my Facebook. So. Right. And that's where I think it's really helpful too that you had this tonight because you you know you're 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 sprinkling in a lot of the like you know some personal stuff too that mm -hmm. you know it's probably just making you more relatable. Yeah, for sure. And for those of you that like you know have kids, have a family that you're like I don't want that. You know, I would encourage you like okay, let's say you're traveling and you go to Mount Rushmore, you can share a picture of your kids looking at Mount Rushmore without creating a you know online portfolio. And deciding that for them when, when they haven't gotten the chance to decide if they want their face all over in social media. But those are kind of some easy things like we do mix our kids in because we've been open and honest, but we're cautious about it. Um, yeah, so I, I hope that helps. I would I would just say use the platform. I would where if you're already on Facebook, use that primarily, start to sprinkle in, and maybe you just get a you know realtor or whatever like business pay, you know, page on Instagram and start following your friends who are already on Instagram. And maybe they're like, oh, I didn't even realize she was a realtor or, or whatever it is. Well, my daughter's actually angry with me because I have more followers on Instagram than she does. And, <laughs> and I don't even know how to use it really. Yeah. So. She, she she's angry at me <laughs> yeah so i would i mean again if you have followers on there i would just share some of the stuff you're already doing um i think you know if in your business there's there's a few things that you could share that people don't know about and it's just a way for people to connect with you more and more okay thanks you're welcome hey guys got some some stats for you here from nar <clears throat> i was at the nar conference the weekend before last and I think I shared this with some of you, but not all of you, but take a wild guess which age, at what age, uh, who bought the most homes last year? Which one particular age, one year? Just take a guess. Type it in or shout it out. Which age bought the most homes? 31. 59. 59-year-olds bought more homes last year so where are 59 year olds? They're on Facebook. Okay. Now check this out. What would you say now is the average age of the first time home buyer? 37. 36. And where are they? They're on Instagram. Instagram, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, here's some a couple of interesting things, and then we can we can head out. But um, you know, we were always told that a uh, person buys or moves whatever every seven to ten years guess what the average tenure is now the length of stay in the, in the home you know for the average person 18 years 18 years this is last year okay um 27 percent um bought a home with cash 87 percent of homes were still sold with real estate agents 87 percent so I remember when, when everything went online in like 2001, 2002, and all these agents were like, we're out of business. That's it. We're done. I'm like, I don't think so. I just got, I, I just got my license January 2002. I said, I think this is going to help you. Then Facebook came along. Oh, we're out of business. Everything is just, you know, technology is going to, no, it's only enhanced our business, you know. Um, okay, here's, here's something you're going to be seeing more of coming down the road. Last year, 12% of millennials use cryptocurrency to buy their house. Just getting started, you know? So in any case, I just want to throw this out there, two particular things over 36 year old first time home buyers and 59 year olds buying the most homes. I'm 59 and with the economy going down, I plan on buying several homes next year. Anybody know a good agent? Anybody? There's two, three, four hands, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
Hey, John, I really appreciate you taking your time with this. I know this went a little bit long, but I, I knew it was oh, going to be a good subject. And Gary, Gary, here's the deal. You have to buy a home next year from whoever in this group posts on social media the, the most. <laughs> there you go. Yep. So, well, hey, hey, John, um, you know, how can people get a hold of you? I mean, I, I, I know you've got a, quite a busy life. You're doing great in your business. And congratulations, too, by the way. That's pretty awesome. Thank you. What you've been able to accomplish in such a short period of time. And uh, primarily using social media. You know, it's amazing. And I actually don't even... See, we have some other things we have people do when they're first getting started, right? Like work on your database, mm -hmm. think all the system stuff. And, and then social media is like phase two. Mm -hmm. But yet we have so much interactivity going on. You know, Braden Kinder, for example, I thought, man, it's it's relevant. It's timely. Let's get it out there now. So it doesn't, just because you're brand new guys, doesn't mean you can't use social media. You absolutely should at least have a presence out there, personal and business page, right? Yeah. And, uh, so, John, any, any final words of wisdom or... Uh, you know, we've got your Facebook page, of course, but anything else you want to share? Oh, words of wisdom. I'm not your guy. No, I would just say like, get out there, start posting. Um, seriously, I love talking about this stuff. So like, if you guys ever have questions, reach out to me anytime we can jump on. Uh, seriously. And I've, I've built a membership and podcast and literally the way I grew my membership was I did like free social media audits for realtors where like in 15 minutes I could basically, normally it was like, this sucks, do better, but in a nice way. Um, and I just think even some of those quick wins, like the bio with your phone number is one, like people miss on all the freaking time. Um, yeah, I mean, you're welcome to connect with me on social media if I can ever help you. I mean, Gary, you knew when you mentioned this, I was like, I love this stuff. I'd love to do it. I could sit here all night and you guys would get really bored. Um, seriously, but like my, you, you, I can uh, put my link as well. Um, so social is John Shookman. You guys can see my name. Um, and uh, we, uh, and there's my, oh, that's just host and panelists. Well, there's my, oh, there's everyone. Here's my website as well. Just kind of has like the podcast. And basically I do that for realtors. So my entire um, podcast was built. You know, when people say, why'd you build your membership? Why'd you build your podcast? And I'm like, it was built from pain. Like I built what I wish would have been there three years ago when I got started. Um, and so now it's been kind of fun. Like, uh, you know, I have, and, it, and I think really the win, Gary, and I love what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing is like helping people. Like I have, a membership every Monday. And like one of the kids is 18 years old. He's not even a realtor yet. He's like not going to college. He's just learning in our group and doing the licensing courses right now. That stuff like gives me chills, get me, gets me excited. Like we all know um, how many realtors don't survive. And so like, if, if people yeah, like yeah. what you're doing, what I'm doing can just help people like change that statistic. I'm, I'm all about it. So you guys have been awesome. I hope to connect with many of you. If you have questions, um, I'd love to talk to you and thank you for your time. Wait, Thanks, Shast Shastine, what are you saying? We were in a panel call this week together, really? I'm confused. Yes, I thought when I was, because I'm a moderator on several panels this month. And I think your name was on one of them because I was sending out emails and prepping for this month. <laughs> Interesting. Um, no, you don't know. <laughs> I mean, no. maybe, but whatever, it, I, I don't know. Maybe. Okay. That'd be awesome. Well, I know what questions to ask. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, just don't, don't think she's clairvoyant, you know? <laughs> hey, exactly. hey, John, if you want, I'd be happy to, to uh, be a guest on your podcast, too. I don't even know if that came up when we met. We It that did, month. and we need to get that We need to get that together ASAP. Yeah, anything you want me to share? I mean, I've I've got a, some wonderful, I mean, this, what the people you're looking at here, these most of them are on the team, and um, just an amazing group of people that the engagement, I mean, we've, you know, we don't get to see each other a lot in person, but when we do, it's a lot of fun. We also have fun online. I mean, we get together daily, weekly, monthly, one-on-ones, mm -hmm. -on and uh, these are some awesome people. So it's just, you know, the whole thing about giving, for me, and that this is sort of a, 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 a one of those life lessons or mindset lessons is I find that when I'm in a state of giving, I'm also in a state of abundance because you have to be doing well to be able to give freely like that. You know, so um, it feels good. It, it always comes back. I mean, it's in tenfold. Sometimes you never know where something's going to come up. Somebody, I've had people literally reach out to me. I haven't seen or heard in years, you know, mm -hmm. or they'll see me on a podcast and and reach out. In fact, one of the new members of the team, uh, Joan Bond from Arkansas, she's doing it all tonight. Heard me on someone else's podcast. 
she said, it's just one thing you said. And she said, I knew, I knew you were coming from a good place and I, I need that. You know, she, her brokerage is one of the big giant ones where they 500 people in an office and she's lost. And I said, well, come, just come to class. This is what I just say, just come to class. You can engage, participate with people from all over the country. If you decide you want to be part of it, you just let me know. And that's how I do my business. And, and it works out well. You know, we have great relationships. So, so you guys, thank you very much. And hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with you and your families, because you do bring a lot of joy to my life and a lot of fulfillment. Um, it's, this has been, I knew it was a calling for me back when I was, this was probably 20, 25 years ago. I visualized me doing this while I'm driving around in my car. It's literally in this almost uncanny how God and the universe delivers. Sometimes you got to be patient. Sometimes it's the next day. Sometimes it's 25 years later, you know, but it works. So in any case, thank you all very much for doing this. And John, thanks again for being on. And uh, you guys set up your one-on-ones. Uh, uh, probably there's nothing, no time left this week, but next week, set up the one-on-ones. Can't have enough of them, you know, let's get strategic. So, Gary, thanks for having thanks, me. Gary. And I hope you guys all have an awesome Thanksgiving. Thanks, John. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you, John. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Gary. Take Thank care, you, guys. John. Well. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.